Um, my name is Tasfai Gauri. Um, I'm a consultant architect, a senior SharePoint developer, architect trainee um, since 2012. Uh, I have my own company, uh, MTM Consulting Group. Uh, I kind of do only trainings um, and help people on their own projects. Mm -hmm. Um, I have a bachelor's in electrical engineering, um, a couple of master's degree, um, both similar, uh, computer engineering and uh, computer science, both masters. I uh, worked on .NET based projects before I get introduced into um, to SharePoint. Um, I focused on SharePoint since 2008, um, so you can ask me anything about SharePoint, um, maybe and Office 365 since it came out. Um, so today, um, I try to kind of fast go through um, the API architecture of <laughs> SharePoint and querying data, uh, client-side solutions, um, mainly uh, how we use jQuery with the classic version of SharePoint, and then uh, SPFX solutions. Um, the same uh, thing, but uh, Microsoft kind of um, organized it for us um, rather than us doing the dirty deployment, uh, make it a little bit manageable uh, through SPFX solution. But um, uh, SPFX uses TypeScript, which is JavaScript, uh, ECMAScript 6 of JavaScript, most of it, um, with the addition of types in um, S um, TypeScript. Um, I will try to go through it, um, but I want, I want to do um, more demo than um, um, reading this slide, but I'm going to share this slide um, with you guys. So um, the API architecture or the underscore API uh, was introduced in SharePoint 2013, but it all, uh, REST API is introduced to SharePoint in SharePoint 2010 with the name underscore VTI being a client uh, SVC. So um, a underscore API is the alias for the a VTI being client CVC. Um, for those of you who've been using uh, VTI bin list data that CVC, uh, still uh, Microsoft has um, kept it for a backward compatibility, but it's a deprecated. Um, but um, we better use the VTI bin client CVC or underscore API <coughs> when we kind of um, uh, interact with our SharePoint. So uh, I like this one much, much simpler than the above one. Both are from Microsoft uh, documentation. So we have a client application and we have SharePoint. The way we communicate with our SharePoint is using um, REST API, uh, uh, endpoints and OData protocol. Microsoft REST API uh, is compatible with the OData protocol and we get uh, Atom or JSON data. We prefer JSON data um, because of it's kind of easy to parse it and. Uh, uh, displayed in any kind of devices. Um, we consume REST um, the underscore API REST through different um, uh, programming languages and applications. Uh, ours with SharePoint is uh, preferably like J JavaScript and TypeScript. Um, that, but um, for, we can use the SharePoint REST API from any kind of platform, um, from Java, uh, from uh, iOS devices or applications uh, or .NET. Um, and the, the SharePoint also has built-in um, client live JavaScript library. For those of us uh, who are familiar with it, we can still use it. And on top of that, the, the also um, there are a lot of additional libraries, PNP, if you guys are familiar with. Uh, PNP.js has a bunch of uh, pre-built uh, libraries that we can consume, uh, SharePoint, REST APIs, and SharePoint has a lot of things, teams, document libraries, search lists, and etc. cetera. And uh, my focus today is how to deal with all of the resources that we have in SharePoint using um, uh, uh, code. Um, so we, uh, Microsoft has um, gave us, uh, like a REST API is um, an input, so we just need a URL, uh, which is an HTTP URL or HTTPS URL, with um, the REST uh, uh, co uh, commands or actions like get, post, put. Uh, most of the time, 
we need just to get them post because we can do a lot of things using post and some additional headers, but we could use um, put, delete, and the other patch uh, uh, rest um, um, methods as well. But most of my, almost in every single application, I do everything through get and post. So I can delete through post by additional um, um, a, um, by additional uh, headers. So let's do a little bit of like um, a demo of those URLs. Uh, if you already have, I have this SharePoint, my own, uh, some my companies, uh, my work environment, this is where I play uh, with it. Um, so I have this Tigari SharePoint, it's SharePoint Online, it doesn't matter, um, any SharePoint version 2013 or above can work, uh, can be done the similar way. Um, the way it's um, similar with the way I do it in here. Okay? So it's not SharePoint 2013 and above. So I'm going to go uh, open up my own browser. Uh, put Sorry, my, I'm having trouble. Um, put my um, URL uh, up to my site collection there. And as I mentioned earlier, uh, I'm going to use backslash underscore API. So this is an entry to the SharePoint REST API. From here, um, if you understand the architecture of SharePoint, SharePoint has a two um, a site collection. In the site collection, we have root site. Under the root site, we have another. We can have another subsite. We have apps, which are lists, libraries, and um, custom built-in apps. So, if you understand the way it is structured, that is how we use the URL from here. So, the first URL I'm going to call is actually web, but I can put a site which gives which will return all the information about my site collection. So put in site here, that is all the information about my SharePoint site. So um, I, don't, I don't like XML uh, since JSON came out, uh, but in the old time, that is the only way we communicate um, uh, between um, or do messaging uh, but now I prefer X, uh, JSON. So I'm going to go use, I, I, I kind of like Yark. Uh, people use Fiddler and etc. But I, I like Yark because I don't want to do uh, more of uh, authentication because our, my Yark is uh, an extension to my Pro. I already logged in to one of, on one of the tab into my SharePoint site. I can simply put in and do a get request. It uses the session of the SharePoint, which I already logged in, and go get the information from my SharePoint. So Yark is free, cool, um, I like it, and you guys can use it. Um, yet, yet another REST API client. Um, if you work for government, they kind of block it, but uh, if you are like me, uh, you can use on your personal. So um, I put in API, um, site and this is information about my SharePoint site. So it's the rest, uh, it returns an object, right? It's an object and all of that is uh, the metadata information about when it was created, what is the URL and etc. cetera. Uh, upgrade reminder date, all of that. But I'm gonna go to the um, backslash web, which gives me the information about the root web. So uh, that's the root web, I can get the title, the template, the URL, server relative URL, uh, the web template is here, the title is here, all right? So uh, what I'm doing here is just um, checking the get, but this Yark has like post, put, patch, delete, but if I'm doing post, I have to do, um, add a payload, right? So uh, payload that sends to the SharePoint to do an update, delete, or whatever actions I'm gonna perform on SharePoint. So all of the demos that I do in Yark is just reading. So um, this is a web, and if I have a subsite under this, I can do through webs. So web, packs like webs, can give me all of my subsites, all right? But I'm gonna go all, get all of my SharePoint list by uh, simply adding um, lists like that, all right? So when I do that, okay, 200 is okay response, all right? So 404, is our friend um, for all three unauthorized and the third time at 200 is um, an okay response 
So when I do list this, all of my lists are here. So the first list, so I get all data metadata, and I'm not using any header here with my SharePoint online because uh, my SharePoint online kind of knows uh, it is a REST request and it gives me back. Uh, but I have uh, my work SharePoint that I can try to copy the same thing here. I think I'm already logged in. And I'm going to open another Yark here and try to do the same. And just for API web. The, this is SharePoint 2013. That one is SharePoint 2000. Um, SharePoint Online, which is, I think, SharePoint 2016 um, is what it is running. Um, so here, my SharePoint on premise didn't return this, it returns that. So it's, this is my SharePoint data, which is an XML data on premise. So uh, to SharePoint 2013 or on premise, I have to explicitly tell or add a header that says application uh, accept application JSON or data variables, right? So I have to add this application JSON or data variables. So um, with SharePoint Online, you uh, SharePoint Online has additional. If I don't need any metadata, I can uh, trim it out, which is makes it, the system much faster. Um, I'm gonna go add that section here. So header is accept application JSON or data variables. Okay. So when I do send this. It of course returns some data, but um, the schema of the data that I get back is a little bit different because uh, when I do this, I can add the same thing to SharePoint Online here, and that is going to return the same the same thing. Uh, did I go to the list here? Oh, that is web. Okay, let me go to the list. Sure. Okay, web list. Right. Um, so that I can expect. Okay. It's, it's just returning, but right, here we go. So it says uh, it returns an object with a D, and the result is it's a collection of all my SharePoint lists. Um, but here in the other one, it returns lists. Why is system slow? Sorry for the oh, my CPU. Um, I'm going to open a visual card and type it on my visual card. My arc stopped working. Okay, I'm not gonna do, remove and add it um, um, because it will take longer. So uh, we need to use some header, but uh, in SharePoint Online, 
uh, we have different headers to uh, minimize the metadata information that returns back uh, so that um, the data that we get back because of the network overhead stuff, um, we get less data, which is much faster, which is by using the minimal, uh, minimal metadata or no metadata. But in SharePoint on premise, we have to use um, a, uh, a header with the metadata, which is application JSON or data verbose. Uh, that is, but the way it returns is going to be different. The way we get the response back is different. I'm, I'm going to demo that one through code. Um, but since my my um, browser Chrome extension kind of acted today, my computer is super powerful, but OK. Uh, so those are like some of the examples that I came up with. Uh, earlier, I got all of the lists. So uh, if we need a specific list, we can use by get by title, or you can use a GUID, but I prefer get by title because you can see exactly what the title of the list is. And to see the items in a list, you simply put backslash items. And then uh, if we want just one item, you can simply pass in an ID to it. Or um, uh, if we want to use the, check the current user, we can get it through this. Um, uh, but also there is a role assignment, which gets all of the groups under your SharePoint. And then uh, one group can be chosen by, by just using it uh, by principal ID, you get by role assignment, it will return a collection of all the groups, SharePoint groups. And then if I want one, um, those, it also has the, um, here we go, it's kind of trying to work. What's happening? Sure, all right. A lot of yard. Okay. Um, earlier, I tried to do it um, under SharePoint Online Listers, and I'm going to add that, the same header that I added into my SharePoint on premise. Oh, because of that, because of this. Okay. So I added the same header to my SharePoint Online, and the same header application JSON will be the variables in the header. Oh. I added it twice, but um, that one. And when I do send the request, instead of, I'm going to get the same response that I get for my SharePoint on premise. That's the same kind of response. So the response is with the D object, which has a collection of results. And that is how we need to enumerate through uh, all of my results. Um, it differs, but for the same, on, uh, when I write my code to work on SharePoint online and on, on premise, uh, since SharePoint 2013, I have to always use the same header that I used in here, which is application JSON or data variables. If I want to do include it into my code, okay, acted again. It's not clickable. Yeah, it acted again. Um, so um, that is how how what we we gonna get back uh, from uh, from the server. Uh, so uh, rest. REST is um, the name, representational um, state transfer. Uh, it has a lot of uh, main capabilities that we can uh, do through REST. Um, uh, and also we can, um, we can use um, easier to consume using jQuery or any kind of JavaScript. Uh, it's, it is a, a cross platform. It's a URL based. It's also sec securable through OS and HTTP security. Um, so it supports uh, a lot of all of the HTTP uh, op, um, methods, but as I mentioned earlier, I always use get and post because, for example, like touch or merge is post plus x HTTP uh, header. So uh, I include those headers into my post rather than using post uh, patch or merge or uh, whatever. Delete, <laughs> delete is the same as post plus some addition of headers and make uh, the delete work. Um, so this is a much easier way of understanding uh, SharePoint uh, REST API uh, reference. Um, you have a URL inside and underscore API and there is a namespace in there. So the namespace is like web that we use, site, 
And then uh, we can use after that an object or a property or an index of um, or a method like get by title, for example, in my SharePoint. Get by title, person, a string of the title of the name of my SharePoint list. Um, and then um, it has also like we can add more operations. Um, there, if you like a bit, much better, this is my own drawing, a much better way of uh, um, the documentation that is in here. I like this one much better. I didn't want to copy there. To make, but, oh. I thought I'm on it. I click on the link. I told him uh, I'm talking about this. Uh, this is the link that I already shared it in here in, in there. And uh, how all of uh, this is going to be uh, presented. Um, so I added that as, an, as, as a reference for us. So the main namespaces are site, web, SP user profiles, context info, search, publishing, social feed, and the search bar. And also like um, um, to query a data, uh, API underscore API also supports uh, for data comp uh, uh, compliant. So which means that if I want to, for example, I get all my SharePoint list items, but I don't want all of the different columns in my SharePoint list items. I only um, maybe need only the title and uh, the author or the created by a column. In that scenario, I can use the dollar sign select with the query string, adding question mark at the end of my REST API endpoint and use the select or data and equal to all of my columns, like a title, comma, um, um, description, comma, and this, et cetera. If I want to limit my row, the number of rows that is coming back from the uh, REST request, I can uh, filter it, do uh, a filter. The filter or data uh, uh, requires the property and uh, the comparison meters, uh, the logical operator, and then uh, the value. Uh, but I already included those in my uh, slide that I don't want to go through, but I will uh, do it through example. For example, for equality, a title EQ test one, for example. I have to say title EQ with the text as to GT for greater than GE for greater than equal to. For those of you who work on Power, PowerShell, uh, PowerShell uses some similar operators with that small dash, right? So GT is dash GT, EQ is dash EQ, and etc. But um, uh, those are like I have included all of uh, the operators in here. And if we want to get the top 500 or the top 20. Uh, we can simply use top equals and an integer value. Uh, skip. Skip is really a very nice one, but it doesn't work with SharePoint list items. If I get the top 20 and I want to get the second 20, top 20, I can't skip 20, the first 20, and go to, um, go to the next but it works for other lists and the stuff which doesn't make any sense. But uh, they have uh, when I get the top 20, I will show to you, uh, they have um, uh, a way to get the other, the next top 20, the next top 20 until the end. Um, I have a way part that I built uh, for um, uh, for the purpose of um, view threshold limit. Uh, you can download it. It's SPFX, but it can be done by uh, regular jQuery stuff. Um, so that if you have over 5,000 items in your SharePoint and you did, you forgot to index it and the stuff or do your uh, threshold view mm -hmm. limited stuff, um, my web part can handle it pretty easy for you. Uh, it doesn't get break even faster. Uh, expand is if we have uh, a lookup columns. A lookup column is gives you an ID of the other list value in the column, it doesn't really keep all the information about that, uh, the, 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 the list that is referenced in the other uh, SharePoint list. In that scenario, we use uh, expand so that uh, if I need the lookup column value uh, description from the other list, for example, um, user, user information in our SharePoint is, uh, we trade it as a lookup. User is not um, uh, just, um, user by itself has a lot of descriptions, right? User has a name, an email, 
um, user has a manager, user has a department, user has phone numbers, and et cetera, which means that the information that can sit by itself on one huge list. So user is um, treated as uh, a lookup, so which means that when you read user information, you get a user ID, which is a unique ID for that specific user, and then you have to add more if you want to expand it. You have to expand it and see the other properties about that user. So we have logical operators, um, arithmetic operations, uh, some functions that we can add into our REST API um, as an O data. Um, it's a, a lot of them, and then um, I'm gonna go query, uh, do a little bit of example. Uh, I, I think I don't have to write it. I'm gonna write it uh, on my code, uh, rather than putting on, the, on the, um, my Yark, which was keep on failing. So for example, this uh, sample query, as you can see, in the demo site underscore API web, get, uh, it goes to get a document uh, from SharePoint, and then it goes to the root folder, and then um, enumerates all the files, and then the author is the created by. It expands that one so that we can select, instead of the author, the created by ID, I can select the, the created by email or name by using author backslash the property of um, the author. For example, in here, it says author, which is the created by. Title is um, the name of the author. Okay. And order by is another O data, uh, which is the same as in SQL Server. Um, in SQL Server, it is also order by, ordered by, but it's two words in there, um, which is um, uh, sorting, and we can do ascending, descending. Uh, we can order by uh, multiple columns, and then the top is the top 10, for example, the top N numbers. And then we have a filter criteria there. Uh, what it checks is, it checks in the name column if it has a chapter, text chapter in the name, if it contains, uh, which is the substring of that chapter exists in the name, or its name contains uh, the text chapter, uh, it is true. So um, when it is true, that is a filter criteria. I try to um, explain it in here. Um, I'm, we're gonna go demo in jQuery. Uh, so I'm gonna go demo in jQuery. Uh, I'm gonna start writing it from scratch. I have some snippets to make um, my writing very fast. And then I, I'm gonna put it in my SharePoint list and um, we'll, um, I'm gonna go create a folder. Here we go. That is my readme text. Um, I will explain why I added that. I'm gonna go create a folder, uh, demo uh, spug. And in here, I'm going to go create a file, a demo uh, items. Uh, HTML. I'm going to make it a little bit HTML. So in my uh, demo items HTML, I'm going to go uh, have some snippet here. Um, I'm going to go grab the query, which I need a little bit now. Could simply go to the website and grab it there, but I'm gonna go grab my jQuery here. Um, those are the two, but I don't need the second one, which is a bootstrap. I don't need it all basket. So, um, I created my file as an HTML so that I can type HTML in here. Okay, so when I put my JavaScript, I put it inside the script tag uh, of an HTML. So, um I don't need the second one. This is um, a jQuery. I'm going to use the CDN, Google, Google CDN. Um, that's my jQuery. So that, uh, let me steal one, one method in here, uh, which is, which is, I don't want to write it, but okay. actually what I need is just this solution, right? So I'm going to go um, write in my, um, I'm gonna go get, I have a SharePoint list here. Here's my SharePoint list. I'm gonna go with the bigger list that I have in my demo, which is, let me go with list of countries, PNP list, that's this one. I'm gonna go grab this. I'm gonna change it into classic. 
that is my shape point uh, mist, which is plain key list. Okay? All right, so that is my shape point list. So I'm going to go um, um, function get items. Times. I'm going to make it a little bit. Um, I'll accept your so that I can um, jQuery in here. So um, that is pretty simple, simple code. Uh, so this is um, how to make uh, a REST API AJAX call, which is a jQuery AJAX call uh, from um, that is this, that is that. I forgot to close it. This is this. Oh. That one is that. That is this. And close that. Uh, right that one. And that is. Okay. All right. So if you look into this, this is a jQuery Ajax. The jQuery Ajax expects an object. Um, to call a REST API, a REST, any kind of REST endpoint, not SharePoint. You can do any kind of REST endpoint. So um, this is my URL. The methods that I want is, is uh, a get headers. As I mentioned earlier, I want this to work for my SharePoint on-premise. I'm going to use application JSON no data variables, but I could make it a little bit easier because I use SharePoint online. I can do um, no data, no metadata. Okay. Or um, so I mean I don't want this success in here because I want to reuse. Uh, this function again and again um, later on. Okay. So I'm going to go uh, return this to the caller, which means that it will return a promise, right? So um, I can call wherever I like. So this is gate items, as you can see here, when it hover on it, kind of, uh, kind of a little bit helpful. It will return this a promise, which means that I can call. Um, I can call, I'm going to go type in jQuery. Um, if I want to do a letter or processing, um, maybe you guys remember the first the first jQuery methods you guys learn is on load method. I don't know. Um, I like this function. I don't want to really do it. I, mean, I didn't want to write it. But um, uh, this is um, uh, sometimes uh, if I'm doing some um, a jQuery processing of a page, uh, checking if an element has this or if this element exists, this does that, do this. Uh, it has to be fully loaded before you start manipulating HTML on a page, uh, which is in SharePoint or in SPFX. You don't need to worry because you have zero access to the, any other elements. Anyways, um, I'm, I'm not going to use that one for um, uh, my demo purpose. I'm going to go simply call this function here. I'm going to go to the call that functions. Um, so, um, call. I can put it inside here for the moment, but it can be happen. Um, so my um, URL. I don't want to hard code my SharePoint URL here because it has to work for all of. So if you guys are using SharePoint Classic, uh, classic. Uh, version. Um, I'm gonna. This is a classic view of my SharePoint. If it's modern, you're not. It's not gonna work. If it's modern, you can't use this code either. So if you see here, I'm gonna go put in a, uh, an inspect here. There is one re very useful object called SP Page Context Info. That guy. This has a lot of information. So this has. SP page context info has web absolute URL, which is the same as my SharePoint site collection, right? So SP page context info that web absolute URL will return my site collection. Okay, kind of makes sense. Uh, if I'm in the subsite, it will return my subsite. So if it runs on you, on yours, it will return your SharePoint site. So I'm not gonna have to code this part. Rather, I'm gonna put that information. Um, here saying that that is that class um, or uh, or instead of this I can simply type in why don't I type list in here and make it 
so that I can put my URL, build my URL there, right? So if you have a list name, I can build my URL from the previous presentation like this, plus underscore API where listers get by title and in a single quote, I'm going to pass in the name of my list name, which is this guy. All right, that is the variable. So I'm going to close that one and do a little bit of a string concatenation. Um, I don't like this because um, I could simply write um, um, a command script six string um, interpolation, but I'm going to use the string concatenation here. Get by title, that one is closed, and that, and then items. Right, and then uh, let me go get um, the top, the top because I have two thousand items in there. Okay, top ten, top equals ten. All right, so I don't care. Um, let it return all of the different columns that I have in there. Um, so um, that is that. In that is going to be my URL here. So, um, URL. Just to make sure I'm using URL URL here. Okay, URL, this one is what the property that Ajax for requires. That is my variable upstairs. But I could use um, the same. And then that is that. So if I do here, I can pass in my list, which is PNP list. I think that is what I named it. P and P list, right? Okay. So go get, go read from a PNP list. And then since it is a promise, I could do then or I could do um, then or whatever. Uh, so I'm going to go um, type in then. So then, uh, as you see uh, on the um, my visual code, it tells me it expects us two, two functions, right? The success function and the fail function. Uh, go get it, okay? Something might happen in the in the over, on the red, right? So uh, it might try to get it, and maybe went there with the wrong endpoint, and 404 might happen, right? Or it might get successful. So for both of that, I'm gonna write um, here uh, two functions. I'm gonna write a function. Um, if it gets back, then I will get uh, that is a success. That is my function for my success. And function for my error. If error happens, and this guy is going to be small. Okay. So then the then function uh, expects us two functions. I don't want to pass in right. Uh, I can write a function outside of this and pass it to it. But um, uh, for simplicity, uh, I'm not. I'm going to type in uh, write it here. Okay. Two functions. The first function is a success function. So when I get my data back. The second one is if error happens. Okay, I don't do anything if error happens. What I usually do is just log it, and so that I'm going to log console by error and oops, error happens and um, log error, and that will take care of my my first function. I'm not gonna do anything. Just here it happens. Let's just log it. But I'm gonna alert and annoy my user. This is where the magic happens. The first function, which is a success function. Okay. So the success function came in. So I'm not gonna do um, any kind of uh, very complex things for now. I'm gonna go console log uh, my data. Okay. Data is here. That is that. Okay. So I'm gonna grab. Um, any question here? Nothing? Okay. Um, I can run this. I don't want to upload it and do. I, I can run this on my SharePoint, right? Um, go to the pages. Okay, a classic page. You guys know you can't do this on um, modern pages. And everything that I write in here is for classic. S P U G J M O. Is fine to go. I'll keep it in my side page if it exists. Override. 
Uh, I'm gonna go add my friend script editor. Everybody's friend, right? I'm gonna go um a media and content and go with the script editor. That one. Yes, it's pretty easy to test my code right here. Right? I don't have anything to show. But um so I'm gonna go inspect because I didn't do anything that displays anything. I'm gonna go check my oh here we go. Data is object. So what we get is this, right? Data is, and then um, it's successful. I didn't make any mistake. This is good. Um, so uh, I got 10 because I requested 10 of it, right? And then that's my 10 items. So the nice thing about this is um, based on the header that you use, so you got, you requested 10, but the SharePoint list has more than 10 items. Uh, if you need uh, the next 10, you don't have to build your query, rather you can use this from the response, the next 10 can come by using this URL, okay? So if I was talking about the skip thing, but really the skip thing is <laughs> very, very annoying. I don't know why Microsoft did that, but uh, uh, it kind of on the documentation, they finally noticed it, but in the first time they were, it wasn't. I'm gonna go, huh. Can I copy this? How can I copy? Okay, that one. Okay, it's displaying it here. You see that? It says skip token. So it has items and then 0.24 uh, skip token, which is the dollar sign. Okay. And then paged and then uh, paged equals true. And then um, and if this is also again is that equal percent two six encode if i encode this url i was to get this so that i can encode it copy property pass decode url so that okay, i'm gonna go decode it in here Should. Test it, decode it. Yes, that is what is happening. Skip token, paged equals true, and then the page ID is 10 and the top 10, which will return starting from the 10th item, the next page. So that is how we build the paging. So uh, you don't need to remember what it is, but that is how to, you build it. Okay? If you want to build a, a passing or paging stuff, okay? that is how you build the match. The way part, but uh, kind of tedious though. Um, so let's go display it. Um, so this is um, this is cool. So let's say okay, I can get my items right. So um, from here, I can do whatever I like. Okay. So for example, I want to do display using some Bootstrap. Um, Bootstrap is a very powerful um, user user interface um, or um, a very powerful uh, um, GUI uh, framework, UI framework. Um, I'm going to go grab some documentation here. Maybe I'm going to go display all of my components here using this little card. Okay, Because I have in my SharePoint here, I do have, where is PNP list? I have the first name, last name, first name, email, gender, and some photo and department, right? Uh, but the photos are kind of dummy. Um, maybe the size of the photos might not match. Uh, so I'm going to go display this like this. So that, okay, I have an image. I can skip the image part if we want to. I c we can display something like this, okay? Uh, Instead of the title, the full name, maybe the department, some junk content, I don't know, something like this. Can we all agree? Okay, so this is this card. So I, I don't want to write any CSS. Okay. Uh, so the card says div class card and the style width is 18 rem. I don't want to do that all junk here. So what I, to do this, I have to use the bootstrap CSS, which is 4.4, I don't mind using Bootstrap 4.4. Um, 
Bootstrap. Bootstrap. I don't know if you guys know, WC has, WC schools has really very nice reference um, for learners and so that you can practice it in here. I'm not going to use the JavaScript, I'm going to use the CSS only. So I'm going to grab that CSS included into my, my, my project. Right? Or here we go. So um, that is the content. You can draw the CSS here. It doesn't make any, any change, right? I'm going to put it, um, all of my views here. All right? So I'm going to call um, div. Okay. So um I use um div container load um div class container float which kind of makes the container a little bit of um fifteen pixel, fifteen pixel kind of fills the whole thing. I'm gonna put a div um roll. And I'm going to put in um, div call sm. How many can I display? Can I display four of them? Four in one row, four in another row, and the set The 10 is going to be like four, four, two. Right? Um, call sm, um, four is um, three. So that it will take the 12 and over 3. That way, I can display my card is right here, um, which is so this card, right, in one column. So I'm going to go paste that card. So it says that is the card. I don't need the words anymore because later it takes the whole um, words. Um, it says that in the title of the card, and then the card subtitle and that is the card the link probably i don't need it and that so this is what is going to happen for i have 10 i have n items the n items is going to be i'm going to look through and i'm going to um, generate this and link it into my uh, rows here so i'm going to go give id equals um, my pnp list Right. So this is my PNP. I'm just giving an ID so that I can generate the whole HTML and um, inject it into um, my div area. But uh, to just make sure everything displays properly, I'm going to edit this so that did I get all of this class properly. Um, here there wasn't displaying anything, but this time it will display, right? Something like that. Okay. So this is one column. So I'm gonna go get all of that. So this is Bootstrap. It's pretty simple. Uh, you can do self-learning here. Right? Um, if you don't want to write any kind of CSS by yourself, I don't want to write CSS. Uh, I use Bootstrap a lot, uh, but Microsoft is kind of building their own uh, fab fabric fabric UI. Um, I didn't like it yet. <laughs> they didn't convince me, but uh, uh, they kind of in their way to build their own bootstrap. All right, so let's go code it then. All right, so the thing that we have to repeat is this area for every single user. For every single user, I can repeat this section again and again. Right, so uh, so that section is this guy. So I know we already know. Like let's do here a little bit. Let's look into our whatever data is just came back, right? This is the data. So data dot D dot result is, is a collection that I need. Okay, data dot D dot results. Alright. I don't want to make mistakes. So let's go type in here. Um, whatever I type uh, I post it. So the this area cannot change. So I will always keep this function so that I don't write it again and again. Because it's going to be the same unless otherwise somebody came up with a better code, which I don't think going to be that much, which is smaller, simpler than this one. I'm going to go um, var items equals, I shouldn't be, I always 
like the unlisted um, bar items equals um, data d dot results. So I have this. So which means that I can loop through all of this, all right? So I can use any kind of loop for simplicity. I think for loop is a better easy way. I can use a uh, for each, but I'm gonna go um, data d results for each and build my HTML. I'm gonna go uh, var HTML equals uh, empty string at first, and then every loop I build that HTML embedded, 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 right? Uh, so um, so for bar item in items what is item actually it's not item it's an index or an index in the items which will return zero one two up to nine because array is mom. and then i can build html plus equals i'm going to use because string concatenation of this kind of looks dirty so which is that this plus this plus this plus this. Okay, so what I'm going to use is, uh, I'm going to use the script 6, but it's not going to work on IE11. Uh, it will work on a, um, but it's pretty easy to uh, change it though. I don't want to do, uh, so I'm going to use uh, ECMAScript 6 because this is a demo purpose. Uh, so that, that is the section that I want to copy is from line number 9, uh, 8 up to this guy, right? So that is the one that I want to copy. Okay. So um, my string template is um, like this. It's not a single code. It's a backtick. Okay. I'm going to use a backtick so that what I'm going to do is I can use with the backtick. I can test my whole HTML my head, uh, which is cool. Uh, cool JavaScript, right? Um, but um, so that this is whole thing is my JavaScript, but and then every single, this is a title, which I can get it through dollar sign, that, and um, it is items, items of index, that I think title, uh, I'm gonna go check in exactly so that I don't um, make, okay, I don't make mistakes. The title is the last name, I guess. I have the title, which is the last name. I have first name. Huh? First name, space, items, I can do a plus, plus. Um, I'm gonna go grab the same that right and the last name is so I get his first name from Patrick and make it one full name uh, in the other title so I'm gonna go display instead of here a draft Let me display his gender because I think I have a data called gender here, right? And also we have email. So can we display gender in the email here? Gender, email, is that okay? But I, we can use the gender icon and um, using, okay, so instead of link, I'm gonna use um, without a link. Okay, I'm gonna go away. Okay, I can go away. So that instead of our title, I can say agenda equals dollar sign that and I think it says gender, right? And when we use email, that, um, sometimes maybe I'm not going to go type in email dollar sign for his email email. What happens? Because I have multiple. All right. Um, because of my space, it doesn't fit if I type in all of that. Um, and I'm going to keep this guy here because I don't have description. So 
that is that. And then this keeps adding, adding, adding 10 times in my case. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go find an element with this, right? An element, I'll go find that is small jQuery. Go find an element with ID of that. And then it is inner HTML is going to be HTML variable. I'm going to call type in my HTML. <laughs> HTML, HTML. Okay. I'm gonna go change my variable name. It looks like I'm batting. Okay. Any questions so far? So what this happened? What this does is it goes through uh, all of that HTML, um, build that HTML, go find that give element which is with this index and put this inner HTML with my built. So, which is the 10 items that I found. So, I'm going to go grab this guy, replace this, and um, if it will work. No, I'm going to go here. Of course, the first one sets. If it doesn't work, it will stay like this if there is any error. But, um, it will... Oh, yeah. So, I got it, but um, of course, the that oh, I know why it is because um, it didn't it didn't do the column thing right it didn't do the actual column thing because um, the way the one that I copied here says card card okay so uh, but I should have picked call SM3 the whole call SM3 so what I could do is um, I'm gonna go get this this is this is a, the class in bootstrap that makes the column um pick the three parts one third of the column like one third of the whole screen okay for a small screen uh which makes it a four column uh, data so i can simply put this in the in the um, in here just count at the same time call sm12 okay? uh, call sm3 I, I don't have to copy paste it there i can simply do it here this is a big course I'm changing. There we go. I don't hear. It is right here. It says card, right? I, th I can simply say card and for SMC. This will handle it. There we go. All right. So which means I make it not in a vertical, make it a column with the three. I can add some spacing to it. There is a margin left, margin bottom. Like you can add a little bit of spacing. But it's kind of, I didn't have, but for every single people, I have their names coming right, correct, right? So um, from here, I don't know, um, we can do any kind of magic in here. So you can do all sorts of like displaying, rotating, or play with it the way you like. But uh, this is uh, the visual. Uh, part of it. Um, so with this, um, I think uh, um, um, 809, we didn't kind of start it on time. Um, but I also have like additional um, game, uh, code that I already wrote before I came. This is, I just came up right here. Okay? But uh, what I created was uh, additional, like I have uh, customers. It goes to the customer table, but I have a post, uh, post which creates an item, and um, creates an item. So uh, I have I have to build a form for that, right? So the form is built based on um, the actual REST API. Where is my form? Uh, I think I, I built. All of my code here. Yep, this is my code. So this is the actual code for the form. So uh, it has call SM10 form form horizontal, and it has um, a legend add customers, and it has uh, like for every um, a customer ID. 
I think I've already created, but I didn't care. I was to copy this one. And um, um, so what, what happens is on the submit, on the submit button, it goes to this, it calls this create a list or create an item. Where is my create an item? Uh, get list with an item, update an item, update that. Uh, okay, that is create, create list item. So create list item is um, to create a list item. Everything is pretty simple, easy, except so you do the same Ajax uh, with um, headers. In the headers, uh, we use accept application JSON or data variables. At the same time, X request digest. Uh, there is a request digest. I'm using um, jQuery to take a request digest uh, value uh, to send with my request. And then my data, which is like, for example, the title, the name, whatever columns I have, um, I build that um, through JSON, um, through just um, an object, and then pass it a JSON object a value in here. But when I pass, uh, it has to have the property underscore underscore metadata, which is uh, equal to the item type that I said. But for the item type, I didn't want to do a REST API. I, type, I write a REST API. This function, get a type is, if you have, for example, a list name called customer, it's going to be um, data, this function. So it is a speed at data and your list name and list item. But what happens is if you change it, most of the time what we do is we create a list without a space and then we kind of mod go ahead and modify it. Um, in that case, it's not going to work. But in that case, we have to exactly find uh, what the internal name of that list is. Okay? So this is the actual internal name. I didn't want to do the REST API, but I have, uh, um, I'm going to demo quickly uh, some sort of like a SPFX there. Uh, I'll show you exactly. I don't have to um, have the code like this. To um, this is to make it easier, simpler. I think I already created uh, this form. If I go to my page, so what uh, the code is here. So what it does is uh, from the from the form, the function reads this values: city title, city state city address, city, zip, email, and gender, and it stores it in those variables. Where is my create item? Create item. Which is this guy. So what it does is it does it generates like this item properties, okay? Item properties, the title is that, the gender is that, the email is from the fourth, okay? whatever the form value is. So it is gonna be in the object item properties. So I pass in, when I create an item, I pass the URL, which is um, the my SharePoint list URL, and list the name, item properties, and then um, uh, this is success function, this is a fail function. I'm passing it from one place. It's a little bit different from the previous. The previous one is written a little bit easier. So here, when uh, when the properties come, it adds additional um, additional property to that object, which is underscore underscore metadata. It's equal to type and then colon uh, sp dot data and list internal name dot dash um, uh, item um, list item. So um, the all, everything is the same, URL type, uh, content type, or header, and then the data is the JSON part of whatever proper item property, and then in the header, you're gonna have this. So this is the success, and then this is the fail, okay? Um, so that is, um, I think I already created this, if I remember, modified, I think I did it, um, newer to older. Newer to order. Hmm. Yeah. 
Yep, this is another one. But uh, what it does is just gonna copy, um, grab it, and put it into my uh, SharePoint list. Uh, the code is pretty simple, uh, similar to the previous one. It grabs all of the information. When I submit, it calls that with all of this data. And then um, after it submits, it reads back the data and displays it in a um, uh, jQuery data table. If you guys use the jQuery UI data table, uh, because it's pretty easy. But I don't use it because it needs all my data to come back. Uh, uh, because uh, if I have 2,000, I have to bring all my 2,000 to put it in this jQuery. But uh, kind of makes it easier because it adds all of that um, into um, um, for the searching purpose. So um, I think with this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go quickly demo uh, what. So the way we deploy this is we can do right everything in one file, one location, all of our CSSs, all of uh, our HTML, all of the references, and then uh, paste it in script editor. Or what we usually do is save this into site asset library, go to uh, add a content editor web part. In the content editor web part in the place there is a property for a reference of the content. Uh, we put that one in there and apply it so that people accidentally don't delete your, if it is um, on a page, it can get deleted accidentally. Uh, that way we can kind of make it um, for safety purpose. But I'm gonna go uh, do um, another demo. Um, so to so that, I'm gonna go um, create um, a folder under here. Um, SP Baltimore. Okay. I'm going to go to the CDFX demo. CDFX demo. Demp. Demp. That's fine. I'm going to go um, open my visual code from here. And I can keep the other one here. Okay. So in SPFX, in our SPFX, um, we use different uh, kind of tooling. Um, I think the best the best reference for SPFX is um, Microsoft's documentation. Uh, you don't get much better resources than the Microsoft documentation. If you want to learn, just go type SPFX on Google. Uh, I think the first documentation it says documentation SharePoint framework. That is where we start to set up our environment. Uh, and um, uh, do um, the initial um, learning, SP, FX, like that. And I think if this is the first, it's going to be the second, but it's always the first. Uh, build the USB uh, overview of SharePoint framework. Um, uh, for those of us which we kind of hate reading, uh, they, also have, um, they also have videos of whatever they in here. So this is the best place to learn SPFX. Okay? So um, type SPFX, uh, getting started. Um, you already have your SharePoint set up, so you don't need this one. But if you don't have it, you can start there so that uh, it tells you how to set up your SharePoint online for free. Um, they kind of give three months free. And then uh, we can go set up an environment um, and web parts, extensions. Um, and libraries and etc. But uh, in, 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 in setting up, the first thing that we do is SPFX, um, we use Node.js. Actually, we don't actually use Node.js, we just use NPM. So the only PS, NPM is Node Package Manager. Uh, so the only supported version, they put it in here, 8.x, 10.x. The version of Node.js out there right now is 12, I guess. So do you don't use 12. You use either 8 or 10. Um, I kind of try um, notes 9.x11, those are not usable. Uh, you can use any kind of code editor. Visual code is uh, the number one code editor. I don't, uh, I use Atom, Atom. Uh, I, I don't like them. I just um, keep myself. Even other people who build Java, they kind of like uh, visual code. And then um, from NPM, which is Node, once you install Node, what you use to uh, what you usually do is install node with all default setting and then you can type in npm version of the node that kind of tells you node version and then from there you install 
a gulp and yom, uh, yomun. Yomun is um, like in visual studio or in um, Eclipse or any kind, when we create a project, we say new project. Yomun is um, the, the tool that helps us scaffold the whole project, creates the folder structure and all of that. But um, Yomun, for the Yomun, there is a SharePoint <laughs> generator, which uses Yomun. Uh, so that is the reason why we use uh, Yomun and Gulp. Gulp is, um, uh, Gulp is, um, is uh, a packaging, um, um, setting up a, 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 um, a development environment, um, building uh, all of that tasks, we run it through something called Gulp. Um, you just install it and you forget it. And maybe you use the, you just use the word Gulp um, one, maybe one or two kind of uh, with two or uh, one or two um, uh, options. So Yo is Yeoman. Um, so when we install, if we attach an option of minus G, that means install it globally. So we run this one time. It will take time to download and install it. Any questions? Uh, every time when you create a solution for a CSS, you need to install. No, no, no. Because this, this is just for setup. Yeah, you know, setting up your environment. I'm not going to install now because I already did long time ago. Unless otherwise, if I'm upgrading, for example, like if I go to my visual code here, um, I like Visual Code because uh, you can also open your um, command prompt or PowerShell right here without leaving your Visual Studio. Uh, so it's a command is control and tactic. Uh, it opens my terminal here uh, so that I can say uh, node minus uh, EU or minus minus version. Uh, it tells me 10.17. So whenever I want to like have to the up to date version that is I do, node uh, NPM minus V or uh, npm dash dash version. So I already have it, I'm not gonna install, okay? So when you install, make sure you got the right one. So I already installed the other um, yo um, minus V, the version of my yeoman is gonna be OG. Um, okay, 311, okay? Uh, it doesn't have the uh, alias V, right? So uh, gulp the same. Um, so I'm not gonna anything that says G is global. So you install it once and then you forget it. Okay? And then this is also one time. This is a Microsoft SharePoint generator. You just do this one time, and then this one you're not gonna run it until you create your first project. So you have to create your first project. They didn't put it in the right place, okay? Um, I don't know, people don't ask questions, uh, or they, people are not using this website. When you run Gulf Trust Dev Server, this is, uh, it creates a, a web server, a local web server, but that local web server also serves all of the JavaScript on your local that runs on the SharePoint, if you wanna test it on SharePoint, right? So I would test on, so it has to be HTTPS, so to have an HTTPS, you need to have a certificate, uh, which you need to purchase through GoDaddy or any certificate providers, HTTPS certificate. But um, you don't have to do that because this will generate uh, a signed certificate that gives you green. So for example, this is a certificate, this is a trusted certificate. If it's not green, it will say X, this is a false certificate, somebody wanna steal your information kind of thing uh, when we go to some website. Um, so it will generate that. This is also one time, but you have to create a, your project first. Uh. Yeah, so this is also for each time, first one time? Yeah, one time, but but the place where they put this is not uh, right, okay? So you have to first create your project to run this, yes. okay? Um, so now, this whole thing is one time. Everything that we do here oh, is okay. one time, yeah. But this requires at least the gulp to run. So for example, I didn't create, if I do type in this, it doesn't know. I already did though, like long time ago. They say, okay, that is what you guys get, okay? I installed everything. You know, you saw all of my uh, things are installed, but when I type gulp trust give sir, it says, this is red. You guys did? It's yeah. red. So it says local gulp not found in this. Try running npm install gulp. 
but I already have gulp. Gulp minus minus version. I already have it. Here we go. Two to zero. So I say that it doesn't exist. I know because I have support in the wrong place. Um, this is one time, but I have to um, for you guys. I'm not gonna do it because I already did this one too, right? But you have to create your project and then run this. Oh, oh, that is the difference in the store. Um, I, like um, something, for example, like um, what he says. Um, yeah, I'm going to put to my own. Um, this is my GitHub. The one that I was talking about is um, list. Um, not all are useful in mm here -hmm, because I kind of keep my code. Uh, unless I put some documentation like that. Um, maybe it's not usable. Um, um, so this is the um, one I talked about. So this is the list, and then it, you can configure your list. Um, whether you have a, a three short limit that doesn't display, this will display it uh, without any problem. So you can select your columns, and then it has all the paging stuff. It uses the REST API. Um, you limit. You have a limit of the page. Show you columns and apply, it, and then that is what you get. But this kind of works. But in this documentation, what you are saying is uh, download it or clone it, and then uh, issue this npm i, which is npm install. This is a difference from the other. The one that we did was npm install minus g, which is global. Okay. This one is for per project. So for example, this project requires jQuery. So then, which means that you install jQuery. But um, when we do on um, um, here, I will uh, create quickly and talk about the project specifically. Uh, it's very much better if I talk it in here, once I create it. So when we push it to GitHub, we don't include all the, uh, all the references, like if I use jQuery, Bootstrap. I don't, because that is heavy file. You can download it yourself. It's not my thing. It's already open source there. So, so what you get is my code. You downloaded my code. And also any references that I used, there is um, one file package.json. It is included there. So when you issue it in the NPM install, anything that I listed in my package.json will be installed on your computer so that you can run my code. Because I my code depends on those. right? So that is the reason why you issue npm install. Um, I'll, I'll show it to you right here. So um, everything is installed, done, done. The first uh, thing that we do to create a project is yo at Microsoft, um, Microsoft. So this is how we do it. So create a new project. So this is why do you issue your Microsoft backslash SharePoint? And then uh, it will go through a wizard, like a wizard kind of thing. Ooh. Okay. Yo. I didn't type it properly, that's the reason. There we go. Okay. So when I type in this, it says, um, I'm going to use the say, uh, I already created a folder. Right? I'm using the folder called SPSX demo, but it says GIMP. That's fine. Uh, it says demo. When I tap, I made a mistake. I could have fixed it, but uh, that's fine. And what do you want to name my project? I'm going to say um, it's a B S P U G demo. Um, and do you want to use the SharePoint Online? Because um, SharePoint 2016, SharePoint Online, the way it generates all of the references, it's uh, going to generate based on the type of the SharePoint, which, for example, like the version of um, uh, a SharePoint framework, I think it's 1.8 point something. Maybe if 2016 requires 1.7, it will install the 1.7 and reference it for you so that, you know, for the compatibility. You don't have to worry, you just tell what version of SharePoint you are trying to deploy these solutions, right? For our case, I'm going to go with the latest one, SharePoint Online, and press Enter. And then, uh, uh, do you want to use the current folder? I'm going to say, yep. Or I can create another one for me, but I'm going to use the current folder. That's fine. Um, do you want the uh, admin, which is a global admin? Once 
the global, uh, actually the SharePoint Academy. Okay. So um, to, to deploy your SharePoint solution, uh, if it's SharePoint Online, um, or if it is SharePoint Online or SharePoint on-premise, on, uh, on then it's a site collection that you need to create, right, for, uh, for your apps. Um, I'm gonna go to my SharePoint Admin Center, okay? Even if you are a um, SharePoint Admin and stuff, you're not gonna get into the Admin Center, which has all of the global admin, but you can be a SharePoint Admin here. So when, um, if you didn't, you have to go to apps and configure your apps. But in this case, just a click, click, which creates um, a site collection. Uh, in my case, it is apps. Where is that? Backslash apps. That one is my app catalog or my organization apps. Uh, I could deploy into the site collection. So anything that goes in here is app catalog for the whole organization. But um, uh, SharePoint Online also has app catalog for every single site collection, which means that if I deploy it here, this cannot get it. Okay, so which is um, a site collection level app catalog, you need to run PowerShell to enable that one. Okay, kind of, uh, you can go through the documentation. Um, but if you didn't, what you do have to do is you just go to the apps here, uh, click on app catalog. If you already created, you landed on your app catalog. If you didn't, it will ask you to create uh, a site collection. You just follow because the template for this is not, you cannot create it it's the same way you create a site collection. Okay? So uh, this is, um, I might have a lot of apps and then app for my SharePoint is here. I'm gonna deploy it in here. Uh, so what happens is once this app get deployed, do you want it to be available automatically into all site collection? So um, you can say yes or no here. That is, but I usually say no. I want to pull in whenever, and I have that one. Uh, they can add it when they want it. But I don't want to push um, through an admin, and it doesn't require any kind of permissions. For example, he was asking me, um, REST API is really, really super powerful, not only for SharePoint. Um, Microsoft is also having a pretty uh, robust um, RESTful service through something called the graphs, Microsoft graphs. Um, uh, for example, um, I might need access to Azure Active Directory. So it uh, doesn't require any kind of uh, permissions. You can set it here if you really need uh, this web part requires access to, uh, for example, um, uh, um, Azure Active Directory through Graph. So I, uh, I would do that here, or I can do it uh, because it just generates some uh, setting um, for in the, in the JSON. Uh, but I'm gonna go with no because it doesn't require. So those are the things that we build. Web part extensions and library. Uh, web parts are web parts. Okay, we've been using web parts since the beginning. Extensions are um, back came in, in 2000, like uh, with the SPFX. Because um, in classic version, uh, I could do anything, right? In here, uh, my code can do any kind of magic. Uh, ear data when I was doing, Earlier, when I was looking into, um, when we created, there is um, SPUG. Oh. Older to newer. Hmm. Older. Okay, this is our first one. Um, when we created this, I could add, uh, for example, my bootstrap CSS is missing my SharePoint here. This is, this is not just a lot here. This wasn't like this. My SharePoint page has this little rectangle and then edit, right? But because of bootstrap, what happens is that rectangle gets stripped, right? It doesn't show rectangle. The other part is uh, stripped. 
but in the in the old times it used to mess up the whole thing so when you use bootstrap it kind of messes up all of your uh, sharepoint stuff so um we have to uh, override a lot of css um ourselves to make it uh, much better still even if that is the case it's still better so that sex that one is um so which means that you the, any css that you included can mess up anything i can hide that one i can remove the whole black area in uh, be using just smooth css but uh, in its pfx you can so if you want to do uh, what is what shapepoint framework did is they provided the areas that your code can change so that area is exposed through SPF um, extension. So the header area, the footer area, that is your, where you can play a little bit. Other than that, if you want to change or hide um, the uh, logo, um, you can't. So a regular thing, unless otherwise you kind of inject um, uh, a different CSS that is kind of, it's not supportable, but uh, we could still do it. But uh, it's not easy. At the same time, uh, Microsoft don't want us to do that. So extension is how we do uh, all, of, all of that stuff. But I'm going to go with web part. What's the name of my web part? I'm going to name it um, ESPUG demo, the same way. And the description. Um, here, I can pick any kind of framework. Um, so I, I like framework. Um, I built a lot of stuff with React. Uh, I think the previous list of viewers React. Uh, I, I didn't like Node.js. Um, Node.js. Uh, I use uh, Angular. But for example, if you want to use jQuery, Angular stuff, you have to go with Node.js framework because the human generator didn't have it. That doesn't mean it doesn't support. Okay. So in that scenario, you go with this one. Uh, I could go either way. Um, uh, React is a little bit of uh, like, um, um, he kind of makes it um, easier for us to uh, work with and um, especially with HTML and concatenation and the stuff. Um, but no JavaScript framework is um, almost similar way that we write our normal uh, JavaScript, but um, I'm going to go, I don't know, it doesn't matter. I can go React or JavaScript. I'm going to go with React. The files are going to be a little bit the way uh, the files are arranged is going to be different. While this is installing, okay? that is uh, the install thing that we talk about. So what this is do doing is based on all of uh, my selections and configuration stuff, and I picked, for example, React, it generates uh, this package that JSON for me. All right. So package.json has some information about uh, my whole project and all of the how my I, I can run uh, the Gulp stuff and all of my dependencies. As you can see here, the React is 16.8.5. Like those are why you do npm install. Uh, so what happens is every single file here uh, is going to be set in the node module. It wasn't there. Okay, it just came now. So node module is the one that has all of the files, JavaScript, CSS, all of that uh, into, uh, 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 included into, uh, added into here. For example, React DAM or type React, type React DAM, Office UI Fabric, React 6, 8, blah, blah. So the SharePoint uh, is a framework that we're using is 191 and more than 18. Okay. Um, that was my mistake. Uh, so I'm, No, so if you downloaded my code, what you get is, you don't get this one. What you get is all of these files, because they are configuration, especially package.json. When you do npm install, it is already here. Versions are already listed here. So what it does is it goes, grabs only these versions that works with this uh, SharePoint solution. Yeah. Uh, okay, so The recent version. The old solution from 2016 has like... Like 1.6 something. 1.6 something. Yep. So, is that available for 
Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. oh, okay. available for download. Mm -hmm. I can I can put whatever I like uh, in it, but the way we do is we don't like I don't know. This is wise. You know what you you are doing. You're not gonna kind of uh, enforce our like installation through this. For example, if I want to install Bootstrap, okay, Bootstrap into my SharePoint. So uh, what this does is the gulp and the stuff. It go grabs all the different codes and components from each um, dependencies, build one huge JavaScript, and that is what is going to be served into your SharePoint. So uh, it kind of makes it um, the whole JavaScript size bigger. Um, so like it, it's not going to ship with. So the whole code generates um, um, a bundle, a bundle solution, which is one huge JavaScript with all of the component con of the um, your dependencies and then deploys it. So for example, if you, another web part is using 1.6, all of the 1.6 code is already included into that web part, okay? They don't share. And this is why you use a CDN, okay? So uh, because that, like it's not really faster, so that's the reason we kind of use CDN. When you use CDN, I don't want to include like Bootstrap, right? I use it with this project. If I install Bootstrap through NPM install, what happens is all of the code is going to be included with this, but it's not going to be shared with another web part. It's going to have its own Bootstrap. Yeah, uh, yeah, everything. So it kind of makes it slow to load because everything has its own jQuery, its own Bootstrap, its own, like it kind of makes it the page load slower. So because of that, what we usually do is try to use CDNs for the known uh, kind of libraries like jQuery, Bootstrap, um, any uh, any external kind of libraries that you included. Uh, if you're using, um, for example, uh, graphs, um, um, JS, graph JS uh, for visualization. Uh, use use your own like. Um, um, use um, the CDN. So in the in the uh, node module, okay, this is a very important file. The tslint, tsconfig, um, the readme file is uh, what goes in there. There is a gulp.js, this is a gulp, um, gulp configuration, we don't touch it. Uh, this is a git ignore. When you, I install, I push this into git, github. So look at that, this is going to be ignored. So it doesn't push this. It doesn't push all of these folders. So what you get is, um, except this all folders, everything. So when you look into this one, you get all of this, and then you can get teams, src, and config. That is all you get. This lib solution temp, uh, they're not there, but when I run some kind of uh, build, it will show up. So those, you will build it yourself and generate it, okay? Um, so that is the reason um, you have to issue npm i here. So what this says, download it, issue npm i. Okay? Sometimes you might install if you don't have gulp, which is global. But um, most of the time you already have it if you are using SharePoint, right? Um, SharePoint framework already, your environment already has it. And then you just do a gulp, gulp self is what you usually do. Um, yeah, this readme, I'm, I'm going to modify it and put it there. Okay. But this is uh, my start readme file for GitHub. Is the difference between this package.json package is the actual dependencies, right? Package.log.json is this kind of log set. Uh, uh, this is sometimes like it kind of logs so that if, uh, okay, says um, this requires 7, 8, sir, right? Um, so it, it, you can lock it. Yeah, if any version, uh, maybe seven, eight, four come in, it might not work. So you can lock all of your dependencies uh, for this specific project not to go beyond this kind of versions. But uh, sometimes um, you might read um, people get when they try to build that it doesn't work. What we usually do is clear the whole project, which is uh, delete this one. So that it will generate a package log for your project. That kind of, but um, it kind of locks it, the the file, the versions to the versions that uh, your project needs. So most of the uh, like our stuff, our thing is in the SRC folder. Okay, here, in the SRC folder, 
um, TypeScript requires cannot have like in the TypeScript, this is a TypeScript. So as you can see, the file extension is TS. So it's not a JavaScript. So here uh, you can see the as I see, I have one web, I have web parts, I can have extensions, I have libraries, right? I can add more of like solutions into one uh, project is in one solution. I have one solution. I can have project one, project two, like the same way Visual Studio. So if I want to have one um, project, want to add another web part into this, I just run a gulp your, your man in here. So that kind of makes it multiple web parts in one solution, right? Um, so which means that in the web part, you're going to have multiple web parts here. So, but what happens is in the SRC, you're going to have this folder but you can't have a folder inside a folder without having a file. Okay. So because of that, this is created. Okay, don't delete it. Or a file is required to be in the root. As I say, because uh, it doesn't allow you. Okay. Kind of makes sense. This file is required. That's empty file. Okay, just get an empty file. It doesn't have anything. Um, everything that we do is in the SRC, um, in the web part, that's for the, our web part, right? So in the web part, why we have is because we picked we picked um, React. It what it does is it creates these components. So um, this is my actual web part. It says um, BSPUG demo um, web part. I think I'm gonna go a little bit expanded. Okay. Um, demo web part dot ts. It is a TypeScript file. This is um, uh, a configuration file for my web web port. So if I do want to kind of have uh, in the web part property some default settings, maybe my web part has a title, my web part has like all of the properties that I want to have in my web part, I'm going to uh, uh, define it, a default values here, the name of my web part, the icon of my web part. Okay. So all of that is in this uh, JSON file. And LOC is my web part can be multilingual, right? If it runs on Chinese uh, based SharePoint, it has to uh, say instead of like some of the help and messages has to be in local language. So because of that, you can add multiple languages here, but it generates one, uh, it adds one English and some strings of like resource file. Um, we used to have a resource file in Visual Studio. Uh, that is how you kind of put it. It's just a JavaScript and a, um, um, a JSON file like this. So that you will have all of your properties key value, key value uh, thing for every single language. If I want to build in my language, I have to make sure I use those um, fonts and stuff in my language so that whenever you add it, any descriptions, any help message for my web part property, it's not going to be in English. It's going to be my whatever resource. But um, so that is um, multilingual. Um, um, because I picked um, type uh, React, uh, React is um, a component kind of based. React is um, React is not actually uh, a framework. It is um, uh, because it doesn't have everything. Like um, for example, Angular is a framework. It has all sorts of things. It has services. It has built-in services. It, but um, React is um, a virtual DAM. Like it's a kind of a virtual DAM or a document. Right, the HTML uh, kind of stuff, but it also the, in the React. What we see here is a different file name called TSX, which is um, um, our uh, component kind of um, uh, file. So the React is not really a TS; it is a TSX. If you build your React in JavaScript, you just say .js, everything in JS. But uh, if you write in TypeScript, your components are TSX. Um, so this um, this is just an interface. So um, for my um, uh, which is because um, uh, we're using uh, TypeScript. TypeScript is type safe, so it's not like a JavaScript where I can say var a and then I can assign a string to it if I want. I can assign object to it if I want. I can assign number to it. Uh, it was very hard for us, like who came from a background of writing C sharp programming language. But um, for everybody who came from a background of C Sharp Java, uh, TypeScript is the right way to go. You can build your TypeScript. It generates. Uh, you can generate easily JavaScript out of TypeScript. You can 
build your code the same way you used to write in C-sharp, right? Because this is type same. So uh, you can simply say var a and then assign a number or a string or a date into the same variable, which JavaScript allows. Uh, this kind of um, enforces the type. Is, uh, the on render is, uh, yeah, no, not okay. Component is, uh, for example, like if I to look into this one, if I want to build this one, I'm gonna break it into components. So my component is gonna be like uh, the same, the same project that I built here. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what I'm gonna think about is uh, every single thing. I'm gonna think it, take it like a component. This is one component. That is one component. That is one component. The whole parent is one component. Um, that way, the each component repeats itself. I don't have to repeat like I do. So if I treat everything as a component, what I do is I just pass those values to a component and get this thing back. Because uh, React is, component is um, a virtual kind of, um, a, a, um, it has an HTML, some logic associated with it. So it is, it's not a web port, but that why we do like, we break down independent entities of the project that you try to build. So when I look into this one, for example, okay, this can be one component, which has this, 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 okay? So, and then this is a component, this one component. I don't need to worry about the rest of the other thing. And then uh, the parent is one component. And then if I have, for example, paging down here, the paging is gonna be one component because it is independent of whatever in here. So the parent can have those components and the components and the paging component, okay? So that when the paging is clicked, the parent gets notified and do the process and modifies this section only, okay? Kind of um, React, just read um, React, reactjs.org. They have all the documentation there. They built um, a TikTok, TikTok or something game uh, from scratch. Uh, you can you can uh, learn your React there, and there are a lot of sessions on um, Linda. Linda has a lot of, but independent independent of SharePoint, all right. Uh, but um, if you don't, if you're not familiar with React, don't pick the React framework, okay. But a little otherwise, you know what React is. But the same thing, I could build it because I'm I picked React because it's kind of easier and there are a lot of reusable components that I can include into my my SharePoint. Um, uh, like because if I want to use like Bootstrap uh, dialog boxes and stuff, I don't have to build all of that myself. I can simply get the Bootstrap React version included into my project and write a code based on that, it kind of makes it easier and um, e easy to understand at the same time. Uh, but um, everything that we do with React, I could do without React. So it's not like a must, but it's gonna be heavy, you know, especially if you don't use, if I use React and doing everything from scratch myself, probably sometimes it's not the right choice, but based on the complexity of the project, I kind of force myself to build in React or not without React. Uh, without React. Yeah, so like that. There is no difference kind of uh, in uh, what we used to do in like the classes. Uh, yeah, the web part properties, everything is everything. My web part, everything is here. PS, like your web part name, and it adds your, whatever web part name you give. And then it adds web part to it, web part that is. Web part, this is a web part, okay? React is the actual HTML is that kind of. So right now it has one component, one React component here. But I'm gonna break it into like um, a page component, a pagination component. Or I might gonna say um, a dialog box component. Because for the dialog box, I'm gonna have a different HTML, right? So it's gonna make the file bigger, 
the whole HTML bigger. So if I put that dialog box as a component, I could use that dialog box on every single, when you click add an item, dialog box, edit an item, the same dialog box, you know? So that is how you reuse the component, okay? But um, uh, every single uh, web part, your web part is in this file. It's gonna be almost similar. Um, there are other files that is um, that I didn't touch, which is under config. There is, we don't really go there much, unless otherwise you do changes into the way you deploy, if you wanna deploy it into your own CDN, rather than going to the actual Office 365 um, uh, create automatically a CDN for us. I don't really, really do change those um, configurations. There are some configuration changes that you guys uh, can do in here, but um, it's a small read. I'm not gonna deal with the, uh, that one. So every single file is in here, and this is our web part. I'm gonna go like quickly go through it. The first section is include all of the dependencies that you want it, okay? So when you include, you're not gonna include everything. So it is kind of modulo, the JavaScript is a modulo. Um, so the way you include is you don't actually put the file extension to it in React, uh, in TypeScript. So uh, import asterisk as React. When you read React uh, by itself, it's not like this one. You have to ex explicitly say what module you want it from that React because that is a big file. But in this scenario, it's including everything, right? Asterisk is everything. And then um, React dump, that is the first two. And then there is a version which comes from this area, okay? So, and then it's, um, um, this is uh, a class, um, an import, this is for your web part properties, okay? So in the web part property, uh, for example, it uses, um, it uses the base uh, client side web part, I property pane configurations, the configuration section, and that's why we call it uh, a framework. You don't need to build that whole junk anymore. So what do you do is, I wanna have a text box in the property. I want to have a date picker in the, my property. So why do you simply add is property paint text field? Okay, one property. It already have one property. For example, I want a, a multi-line of text in my web part property so that it stores in the web part property bag, right? So uh, doing that was kind of tedious uh, when we used to write in C-sharp everything, but now it's kind of make pretty easy. Uh, as you can see here, that is the dependencies that you need from SP web part base from Microsoft. Uh, as I mentioned, everything is in the module. Like if you module expand it, Microsoft is somewhere here. And then you see exactly where SP web part configuration is. When I hover on it, it actually tells me exactly where it is, right? So that is in the module, okay? So every single file is downloaded and sits there. This file is kind of big, okay? Um, I'm gonna uh, collapse that one. And um, so, and there is, this is from the language, the kind of gets um, uh, DSPH web part strings. And then um, there is, uh, and from the component, like as you can see here, from the current folder in the component, there is one component, DSSP demo. That's the component that gets included. But in there, uh, uh, in there, BSPUG is a class or a modular, because if you write a modular uh, JavaScript, this is one class, which is the default exported class. The import that is came from... Yeah, that one is um, import everything from this. This guy is the local. But if I don't want to use this one, I usually, because I know I'm already, I always write in English. I never wrote a web part for Chinese because I'm in the United States, I usually don't include those. Uh, probably I might gonna have the code it because I'm not gonna change into Germany uh, because the code that I write is used only in English. Uh, in, but so kind of that is the language, okay? Um, so this one is my uh, component. This is the property. Um, it is uh, always, it starts with I an interface, um, the type of the uh, web part property. So um, here, it's sorry, um, this guy is here, but this is the React has um, different kind of uh, things, the way uh, it communicates with between components and within, within the component, right? There is something called the states and props in React. So uh, props and state, 
the way you handle within Python, you have to like, the way it renders data based on the, the component communication and stuff, um, there is a huge thing that is called um, props and state. Uh, if you are blind about React, you, if you don't read it, it doesn't kind of mix uh, any kind of, uh, but um, the, that, this one is the property of your uh, component, okay? the React component that is sitting somewhere. So um, we include it here so that we can pass it to it. Okay? Um, so my web part property, I only have one for now. If I need more, for example, like here says description, it's a string. If I need more, I can add it right here. Okay? Uh, I can do quickly uh, in a few. So the whole web part is here. Since it is a framework, it extends this, it's a parent, right? So the parent is, um, the parent is base client side web app already imported with the namespace import to the top. And um, it is uh, a generic, and you pass your own web app properties to it. Okay? So this time I might only need description. Next time I need name, date of birth, the stuff in the web app property. So uh, it kind of changes, so you have to pass to it. And then um, this is one of the biggest um, method which is public render, over, uh, you have to override that one. Then on dispose, um, you have to override this. And the web part, the actual web part property is this one, okay? So in the web part properties, you can have multi-page properties. In the web part, you can have multi-page properties, right? If it's your properties are too many, you can make it a multi-page in the web part. So kind of like pages, which is a collection, and then in the header section, you can categorize your web part properties, some section. Um, in the current web part, you have layout section, um, like where you change uh, Chrome type stuff, right? Kind of, so the same way you can categorize it. Uh, so this is the header section. So that is strings from the top, that property pin description. I might simply type it. Why do I need this, for example? Like I can name it, um, my web part properties. Demo web, I'm going to put in my own demo web part properties if I don't need the language, okay? Otherwise, I have to create that one. So as you can see here, group name. You can simply type in demo group name. And that is the description. I can say here, first for but this has to match the variable that I have in my description. Does that make sense? If I add another, another one, I will add it. So if I add another one, as you can see here, uh, so this is a group. In one group, I have one property. If I want to have multiple, I can keep on adding. This is one property, comma, another property, comma, another property. This is one group, right? Um, this is groups. This is the first group. If I need another group bottom there, I can categorize it. So that is an array. This is the first object. I can make another group, copy the same thing, paste it, make modification, right? Uh, so that um, that is, um, this is, as you can see here, it's a pretty simple object hierarchies. So um, if this opens in a, a square break, bracket, it's called a collection or an array. If this, um, bracket, it's an object. So this is one object. So this is the first group, it has a name, it has different field, right? Um, another group, name, different field. Another group. Every uh, property has a label, like a... Yeah, because it has to store this information, you have to have here, properties. So I have only one. If I need two, three, four, I'm gonna have two, three, four of that, right? So the label has to match the name of your string because it stores the information in here so that you can access that variable into your web app. So like I might say, your, your side, like display per page. Yeah, I'm gonna put it in some maybe count or number of items, I don't know. And then I might say something and then um, when you set it, I, I store it in a variable so that my code uses that value to do some calculations stuff, right? So, um, so for now, for let me kind of 
quickly run this and test it. To run, since this is finished, I'm gonna say gulp cert. So I already have all the certificate, the previous one, MS65 and gulp serve. So what it does is it builds this web, uh, web part for me. Actually, it adds all of the other uh, folders in this area, the bin that, um, here we go. Sorry. Uh, so here we go. And then it runs the web um, workbench, local workbench um, on um, on this. Actually, it is uh, in the config file. The server 423 on this web port. Okay. Uh, we don't actually change it. And then it runs it in there. Why is that? And uh, bring us this whole SharePoint look like what happens. Okay. Bring us this page for us, right? This is not a SharePoint. It looks like a SharePoint. It's not a SharePoint, as you can see here, URL, all of the certificate. That's why you have to run. If you don't get a certificate in X, you need to run. You forgot to run that one. Um, and now this looks like perfect. I can add layouts. I can add here my web parts. Say here, this is a fake one. Because this is my local. I can simply add it. I will see this one. And when I go to the web part properties, that is the description I'm talking about. Right? So, for example, uh, at the same time, what the Gulp does is it listens any changes uh, from the server and updates my web here. So, I'm going to go um, make a little bit of changes here. For example, I'm going to say, uh, let me add one more string here, um, name, your name. And I'm going to say a string. So in TypeScript, uh, the way you define it uh, in a different, you have to first say your data type and your variable, right? Your variable code and your data type in here. And it's almost the same, a little bit. Um, so um, that is the one. So I'm going to say, what is the name? It says your name, right? I'm going to go grab that one. So here I'm going to simply say single line of text, multi line of text, doesn't matter. I'm going to put a um, comma here. So I'm going to copy the same thing down here. Pretty simple, right? Um, and this time, instead of this, I picked the wrong one. I only have to copy this guy. Um, like that, right? So instead of that, I'm going to put my, this is, your name. If you, um, I closed my, uh, what happens is it keep on watching, listening, and compiling, listening, and compiling, and serving. Okay? So because I'm still running Gulp serve, I didn't stop it. To stop, I have to press Control plus C to stop my server. Okay? So my HTTP is served back. I put it that one in here. So I'm gonna put it in there, and um, that is that. All right. So I'm using the same single line of text this time. All right. So if I go back here, your name. Perfect. So that is as easy as this. That is how you get all of your web part properties. Uh, I don't have any any additional, like I didn't say uh, default values. This has a default value, but mine, the, the new one doesn't have a default value. For example, for uh, this one, I want it, um, a, I want it, it to be a, a choice or kind of like any kind of maybe a paper picker. Maybe like a list of, go to your SharePoint, grab all this. There is um, a lot of um, components that is already built in PNP, uh, SPFX, GitHub. You simply go there, you got a lot of web part configurations. You follow that one, you include it into your project. Boom, that is as easy as this one. Yeah, and then put it in. For example, if I want it really to be um, a text instead of uh, this, property pen text field. If I want it to be a different, like you see here, there are a lot of other um, properties, property pen checkbox, drop down. Um, 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 the, 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 dynamic table. Those are like toggle, slider. The toggle is the checkbox. The slider is the one you, which gives you actual number between some minimum and maximum so that they slide in and choose it. So those are like the different uh, ones, but if I really only want a multi-line of text, um, this 
this has this property pn text field has additional property called um, multi, multiple line which I can simply pass in through to make it a multi line text, right? And then come back here uh, if it's already refreshed and compare. Okay, did that. Here we go. Okay. So that is um, that easy. And the, um, the rest of the code, this section is the property area. And then I can compress that one. And the biggest one is here. Right. So this is where the actual HTML render, whatever we saw, like the blue one is getting displayed here. This is a React component. That whole HTML coming from a React component called PBSUG, which is the top one. BSHPUG is this guy, right? This is imported from this location. Um, the nice thing about Visual Code is I can right click on it, go to the definition, right? Uh, actually, this it is this class. Uh, the same file that sits on the other, so it sits on Y. Um, it's a component and BSPUG. So this has the same React uh, reference and then some CSS. It's not CSS, it's a SAS, but you don't have to use SAS if you're not familiar with it. Uh, I could simply use CSS or I can use Bootstrap if I want to. Um, but a, a kind of um, a, with a layer. Um, so here is the property of my React. So this expects this property and any kind of object as as a state. Okay. So uh, properties are whenever the property changes, this gets modified. So whenever a property is changed, um, the render also changes. Okay. So the property actually is the web part property. So whenever that changes the whole render get modified because that property is what passes to it. Uh, at the same time in here, uh, this is a modular um, SAS file here. If I don't want it, I don't have to use it. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go quickly do a, li a little bit of cleanup. I don't wanna use SAS because there's too many technologies. Um, I'm gonna go, um, I'm gonna go remove this guy too. I'm gonna do scaping. Um, I'm gonna go simply put it, delete everything from here. Rather, I'm going to pass in one div like that. And in here, I'm going to type just to H1. This is cool React. Um, so I just simplified it. I don't need all of that HTML and stuff. So every single, like as you can see here, I'm not writing HTML in single code or blah, blah. So I'm just typing my HTML in here. That is a JSX. Because this React component. Okay? So the difference is if I'm writing this and I have to do concatenation or string interpolation of um, 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 equals script to six. But this time I can simply do this. Um, and if you go check my web part here, that is what is happening. So for example, I want to include my boot, uh, bootstrap. Uh, I think I already have that CSS. I just remember. Uh, I don't need the whole bootstrap. Maybe I only need the CSS section, this guy. I don't want to include it through, through code. Um, I'm going to use the CDN of the bootstrap. Mentioned. So I think what I could simply do is I, I can come here and in this per, per component, you can add a CSS per component. This can have it is all CSS. Another component can have it is all CSS. If you didn't use it, the CSS doesn't get loaded into the page. Kind of makes it um, easier. So here I can do, what I can do is, um, if I want it right here, or, or I, I need the whole bootstrap for my whole web part, what I could do is I can simply create a variable here, CSS equals, that is my CSS value. But here, um, I can load my CSS through something called, earlier I deleted that one, you see here, it's grayed out, which means that because I removed all of my language, you know, local, I'm hard-coded all of the descriptions myself down there in the property, it was grayed out, which means that you're not using this, but why do you reference it? Okay? So which means you can remove it. Okay. Um, so what I can import is, there is another um, import that I wanna, 
support statement from Microsoft. Uh, if we want to load um, SP loader, um, this is how you load external CSS in JavaScript uh, from Seagate. Uh, this is the easiest way uh, to load external CSS in JavaScript. Um, it's called SP component loader. Okay. So um, it is from Microsoft SP Loader. Uh, and this is the module that I'm going to do. So what I'm going to do is here, I can simply use that reference SP component loader. But that load CSS. So like when I type in load, I can load CSS and load JavaScript. Load CSS, load JavaScript. Okay? So I can load CSS um, and simply pass in, um, already put it in the, Variable, right? Because simply type in, I put in a variable. So if I want to put a JavaScript, but uh, when you load JavaScript, it's kind of a promise. You have to wait uh, um, because it's asynchronous. But if I'm um, going to do this one, because the bootstrap, then now from now on, I can use any kind of um, uh, bootstrap in here, right? So for example, um, if I use the same kind of um, um, I think um, any. Okay, let me go um, grab any bootstrap, any bootstrap that is easy. Alert, like uh, alert. Uh, this is the one. I'm gonna grab this one and display it. To see. Um, this one. So it uh, says alert, alert primary. Okay. So the class is alert in the alert primary. I'm gonna say here. Um, if you, we can watch it, okay? Uh, because this is not HTML. This actual thing that I'm typing here is not an HTML. Uh, it's called the JSX, right? So I can't say class. Class is a reserved word because I use somewhere class for class, right? That's a reserved word. So you can't use that one. You better have to uh, use uh, that one. And alert, alert, primary. Primary like that, which makes it blue something. Oh, so my bootstrap is there. So from now on, everything I do is kind of pretty seamless. But um, uh, for example, I want to go interact with my SharePoint, right? So um, it is kind of cool. Like if I read because this is everything I'm typing in here is hard code of this HTML and just playing with it and it's not in SharePoint. Um, so what, hap uh, what What? if I want to do this in my SharePoint and display the content? Uh, okay, I'm going to go display my web, part, web page, web, web title, okay? So um, earlier I was talking about uh, SP page context info, which has a lot of information. I can't use that one. So for example, here, um, if I really want to do display at my web, uh, I have to pass in, because that is a JSX, this is actual web part, okay? That one is the React. So this is the React, this is the React, right? So now I can remove this one because I didn't use the, my, the CSS, by the way. I, I removed it, I'm using Bootstrap. So this is my React component, this is my React properties, props, and I'm passing to the React. So for example, uh, this doesn't know anything about the web part. Context stuff, like what is your URL, blah, blah. I can't check it in here. Because that part is in my web part. I have to pass it to the child component so that it displays it. How? Through property, okay? So which means that I have to pass in here, for example, my web title stuff by using web title here and pass give it a property to it. But at the same time, if you want to kind of read um, the way, um, I'm going to go simply load uh, console log here um, in my, this is my web part, okay? So in my web part, there is something called um, a context, that, there's a context, um, and then page context, web, and all of that, because there is no SP page context info, that you can access, there is no such an object. So uh, I'm gonna go simply log it, context uh, log, to log it uh, console.log, and say um, some info, 
again, I'm going to go uh, log it. Context that page. Context that web dot title. Okay, the title of the web. And I'm going to go simply log this one and see what this displays in some info um, where it says that render is called displaying <laughs> too many okay so did what like to have some okay some info and then it says local work page uh, kind of makes sense um, so it, because it's saying that no, you don't have a web title. This is a local workbench. Um, but how do we run this into SharePoint without deploying it? So uh, if I go to my Tigari demo website, like SharePoint site, um, without me deploying this into my Share, uh, into SharePoint, what I could simply do is uh, deploying is package it, which is running one uh, gulp uh, command to package it and then. Um, um, uh, to uh, the whole solution at this PPKG and then drag drop it into that app and then add it into the page and then the web part is going to be there. You simply go add a web part, it will add it uh, right away. Okay, so it kind of makes it pretty easy, simple for us. But how do we te test it? You can there is a page underscore layout workbench like underscore layout 15 workbench at ASPX. This page is where you test without deploying it. This time, this is a SharePoint. How do we know? Because this is click. Because this is SharePoint. So when I go here, I don't have just two web parts. I have a lot. I think I just type in SP, uh, B, SP. Okay, here we go. I got that one. So when I add that, okay, cool web part is here, right? It is served from your local into the SharePoint okay, without any deployment. So that is makes it easy for developers to deploy it. I was copying it, put it in a content editor, whatever. I still have multiple files. It's kind of tedious. So now I can simply uh, check the previous um, log. This time, something for this is demo site SPFX test. This is my SharePoint site um, site title. Actually, it reads the actual title this time. As you can see here, it displays this which is the title of my SharePoint right so um, so I can communicate with uh, SharePoint those errors are not my errors <laughs> SharePoint errors uh, we don't want to see any rate uh, errors uh, we have to make sure we don't get those errors uh, and it's not coming from our code uh, all the time when we write it but this has three errors um, it's related to office risks office apps and the stuff so I don't I'm just ignoring it so from here uh, I can do a lot of uh, get REST API, get request and write request stuff. I already put some uh, in my GitHub. Uh, just I'm gonna press sign in. So, Um, no, it, I didn't do anything that makes um, error happen. So uh, what I did here is, so here we have two, your name as a description. Why does it error? So, so this is the proper way part property. When you go to site way part property, like way part, edit the way part, that is the property. It showed two properties. And then um, I added it here so that I can pick it right in the property section here. The property pin configuration there. I used it right here. So I added in the tab, I added in here. 
so that I can go to the web part properties here. Where was that? This is from my SharePoint. This is perfect. I did the web part. That is the one. Right? I have used this too. So there is no error. So far, I didn't cause any error. Um, so the whole thing is kind of working, but uh, I have some gist here. Um, the, the jQuery uh, demo I created in here, I didn't use it because of the time. Um, I just came up with a blank idea to write it right in front of you guys. Um, but um, there is a TypeScript um, for the meetup, uh, some sections that I created. Um, so what happens in here is to get a, to just read get items, okay? To get an items, for example, from SharePoint, I have this code. Um, this is how I get my SharePoint items. So what I usually do is because like um, we don't use jQuery, blah blah, because this framework has uh, SPHTTP, like HTTP. Um, uh, so I don't use JA, uh, jQuery Ajax to read SharePoint data or jQuery Ajax to write into SharePoint. I can simply use a built-in uh, or uh, it's already included a uh, module uh, for um, um, my my uh, reading and writing stuff. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go put it that method right here for um that makes it um, a little bit easier for you guys. So what I'm going to do here is like what is that it does is um, this is a private method inside the same web part. Okay? So this, like, because I can't say this context, I can't put this in my React uh, JS, uh, JX. I'd rather I can do it here because as we are context page context web absolute URL will return actual absolute URL. And then if you have web listed, get by title, it go grabs the title of my SharePoint. I can use the same list that I did earlier. PNP listers, PNP list, I guess. Uh, I can pick title that, but this time I'm gonna go simply pick at the top in the same way I did earlier. So go get all of the top 10, um, but, and also I don't have to pass all the headers, like because this kind of encapsulates SPHTTP context, um, SPHTTP client that get encapsulated through SPHTTP client that configuration that we want, I don't have to say header, use this header, that header, I'm um, using this, that, um, this already encapsulates it, okay? Header uh, and uh, there is um, a meta, like uh, you have to say, um, if especially if you're posting, a go the um, a digest variable from that using jQuery. So it has kind of like junk codes that you need to copy paste it anyways without even understanding. This time this whole thing uh, encapsulates it. But uh, as you can see here, my visual code uh, say that, oops, this is not included, okay? But because I have, to, I have to import it. So click on it. It will actually import that from its Microsoft speech HTTP. And also like this will return a promise of my items list, but I can create if I need the, the intelligence of all of the objects that I get back, I can create an interface for my SharePoint list, which has that a title, blah, blah, first name, last name. But this time I'm gonna go with uh, any, I don't care. Give me any collection. <laughs> I don't care for list X or list Y. That way uh, this will return um, that as a promise. Okay, uh, yes and as a promise, the data a collection as promise, okay? So which will return my data back. So what I'm gonna do here is, uh, I can simply call this, but this is how we read data. So this is, go get the data from this address, so because that is the URL, the first parameter is the URL, the second parameter is the configuration, and then, then it will come out the response. This is, um, um, the array arrow function, which means a response, a function, I say data, function in the brave bracket, I say data, that's the same, function data in the brave of the brave. This is the whole thing about the success. And then um, I ignored the frame, okay? the frame has to be in comma, and then you have to do the error. And then otherwise propagates wherever it get called. Okay? And then, 
the response is going to be JSON response, and then um, I do that as like that value and simply respond it back as a promise of like a collection of um, items. Wrap it up, okay. So this, uh, if to call it, it's pretty simple. I simply call this one here and then say then, then log it or do whatever you like. So this is how we kind of do it. I'm gonna sh I will sh uh, attach all of that or send him the PDF file of my PowerPoint and then uh, the demo, I'll kind of, the code, if you guys need it, uh, just ask me. I can share it from my GitHub with you. Um, and uh, the recording, I will upload it into uh, YouTube and give him the link, all right? <laughs>